experience and not only experience but they start also demonstrate, demonstrating the power of the Spirit as well. Now, what happens when the Spirit comes upon us? What happens when the Spirit comes upon us? And let me remind you, uh, some of this we have talked to you about from the previous uh, uh, topics on the Holy Spirit. Here in, in verse 1, again, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Now I want us again to understand that all of us who have received Christ has been filled by the Spirit of God. If you are a born again believer, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you or, or inside of you. The Spirit of the Lord is dwelling inside of you. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, He is in you. He is in you. He is in you. He is in you. Now, the Holy Spirit comes upon us, empowering us to do what God calls us to do. Now, I want us to understand we have been given an assignment. We have been given by God an assignment. God knows that we cannot accomplish His purpose apart from the Holy Spirit. There is no way that you and I will be able to accomplish the purpose of God apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you here, you like to travel for vacation? Yeah, we all, of course, we all miss that, right? We, we, you know, some of us, we, we have been dreaming of traveling, and some of you, you've been communicating to your friends, telling your friends, after this pandemic, we will all travel. Yes. Go somewhere. For sure. <laughs> right? But for those of us who, who, who likes to travel, you know, of course, there are different uh, means of traveling. Sometimes we, we take the plane, but but say you are traveling by by land and you have a very nice car, okay, loaded with GPS or navig navigation system. Now you've got all you need for the trip, except that your gas tank is empty. You know, you may have the, the the most expensive car. You may have the most, you know, cool uh, cool car that you perhaps you have bought. But if the tank is empty, you won't be able to reach your destination. Can you say amen? Amen. You won't be. You need the gasoline. And see. For all of us, we cannot accomplish God's mission without the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I, we need the ability, the enabling ability of the Holy Spirit so that we can communicate the gospel with effectivity or effectiveness. So how can we finish the task of evangelizing the world apart from the Holy Spirit? Because left to ourselves, we are not bold enough, we are not brave enough, to be witnesses for Jesus. We cannot rely on, our, on this flesh and blood to give us the boost. We needed the Holy Spirit to give us the confidence, to give us the boldness to be able to, uh, for us to preach effectively. So God filled His people with the Holy Spirit so that we can all Everybody say all. all. Finish the task of reaching the lost. You see, yesterday I was watching Batman. The beginning. And Bruce Wayne said this to Rachel. You know, the love interest. She, he said, you cannot save the world on your own. Here's Batman telling the, the girlfriend, you cannot save it the world on your own. On your own. Even Spider-Man realized that he has too much burden on his shoulders doing it alone. And that's the reason why he brought the Avengers <laughs> to carry out the mission to help him to do the job. You see, Jesus, yes, He is saving the world, but He is doing it with us. With you, with me. He's not doing
doing it alone, even when he was here on earth. He recruited you know, the tax collectors, the fishermen, to be with him. The nobodies to go with him so that they can reach the lost. So Jesus causes His Spirit to come upon us so that we can share the Gospel with great power and effectiveness. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power. You will be my witnesses. And I'm talking to somebody and say, you receive power. You receive power. You are a witness. You are a witness. We are all witnesses. You see, the Holy Spirit is our enabler and our resident power source. There is the power source inside of you that would cause you to be successful as you reach the loss. Amen? Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news. So not only that you are filled by the Spirit, but you are also anointed to preach. Look at the person next to you and say, you are anointed. You are anointed. What does anointed or anointing mean? Anointing is the ritual act of pouring aroma, aromatic oil over a person's hair or entire body. And in the Old Testament, the priests were anointed with oil by implication to consecrate for office or religious service. See, in the Bible times, people were anointed with oil to signify God's blessing or call on a person's life. So when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you are anointed to proclaim the Gospel. You are already anointed. Don't ever doubt that. Some of us would still try to kind of feel it. Oh, I need to feel the presence. You know, you, you are, some of you are still waiting for the goosebumps. But you are already anointed. Amen? Amen? Anointed for what? To preach the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? Why the gospel? You know, Rice Brooks said this about the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God became a man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died in our place. Three days later, He rose from the dead, proving He is the Son of God and offering the gift of salvation and forgiveness of sins to anyone who repents and believe in Him. Can we read it together? One more time, everybody. One, two, three. The Gospel. Come on. Die. That's the gospel that we have to share. Amen. Now why the gospel in the first place? You see, because our high highest hope. Because it's the only solution to man's sinfulness and hopelessness. A lot of people again today they're going, they're you know, they're in mental stress, they're into anxiety. You know why? Because there is no gospel. Because apart from the gospel and the work of the gospel, what will happen to us? You will be hopeless. You will give in easily to the challenges 
that you face every single day. I tell you honestly, my brothers and sisters, it's not getting easier. Life is not getting easier. The reason why we can always make it, even though there are, you know, there are forces out there that tries to oppose the plan of God for our lives. You know, the reason why we can still stand up every single day is because of the presence of God in our lives. That gospel that was imputed inside of you is the gospel that, that brought about change in your life. And that same gospel that is inside of you brought also the presence of God in you. So here, this is why we need to preach the gospel. As much as we like to see miracles, how many of you here, you love to see miracles? I, I really love what, what happened last Sunday evening. We had a miracle demonstration. You know, a few of our people, their, their, their feet started to grow because the other one is shorter. You see, God can do that. How many of you know? Is, is there anything hard for God to do? Nothing. Amen? For us, it's supernatural. For God, it's natural. No, whatever supernatural is sometimes you know, we're, I mean, oh, that is supernatural. You know, that's for God, it's ordinary. Everything for God is natural. As much as we like to see miracles, healing, signs, and wonders, receive words of prophecy, our lives are changed only through the gospel. As much as we, you know, again, we want to, how many of you here experience divine healing in your life? Amen. Healing will not change your heart. Experiencing miracles will not change your heart. There are a lot of people, they experience the supernatural work of God, and yet they're still living in sin. Why is that? Because only the gospel can change us. Amen. It can change your heart. The reason why there are supernatural work of God, the, the miracles, because it opens up the heart of people. The supernatural helps to open a person's heart, but it's only through the gospel that he is changed, that you and I were changed. So that's why the gospel is so critical, my friends. You've got to preach the gospel. The gospel is the highest ministry entrusted to us by God. Imagine we were, we have been called, what? Ambassadors of the kingdom. If you are a Christian, you are a representative of the kingdom of God. And what is your message as an ambassador or ambassadress? The message of reconciliation. So the preaching of the gospel is the highest ministry entrusted to us by God. Romans chapter 1, 14 and 16, 16. It says here, I am obligated. Everybody say obligated. Do you feel obligated? Both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager. This is Paul. Not only that he felt obligated, but also he was eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. Verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So we have been anointed, brothers and sisters, by the Spirit to preach the gospel in power and conviction. Sometimes, of course, we, you do you do not see it. Whenever you preach, sometimes you feel like, man, I'm just, I'm just, you know, just talking like an empty. It's like, you know, parroting. 
It's like empty words, but there's power. When you're preaching the gospel, there's power alongside those words that you share. Because it's the power of God. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we have no power. Again, our preaching will not be effective. So whether you feel the presence of the Spirit, whenever you preach or not, believe that you are anointed. I want you to say to yourself, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am anointed to preach. The Bible said, what the Bible said, the Bible said, the righteous is as bold as a lion. I love that, you know what? Because if you are you're a son or you're a daughter of God, you are you are a righteous person, and there's something inside of you, not something that's somewhat inside of you. And it's the Holy Spirit that will make you bold to share the gospel with somebody. And I can attest to that. This very person used to be a coward. Used to be very insecure. Used to shy away from meeting people. Can you imagine? I couldn't imagine myself standing before you today and preaching this message. It's about the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back again. Isaiah 61 verse 1. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. We have been sent to bind up and heal. You see, the Bible says here in verse 1, if you read Amplified Version, it says He has sent me to bind up and heal. That's what the Bible says in Amplified Version. Sent to bind up and heal the brokenhearted. You see, there is that capacity inside of you. The divine enablement. You know why? Because there are forces out there that would hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. Referring to, the, to Satan, he will do everything. He will not easily give up those who he put into captivity. That's the reason why there, there's always a resistance. That's the reason why sometimes you are being rejected as well. You preach to this person. You preach the gospel to the person. And how come this person rejected the gospel? You know why? Because there is the influence of darkness. You know, the enemy will always try to resist the work of God. But should we give up? No. All the more we have to preach. Because as you continue to preach, you are punishing the works of darkness. Many people are under the influence of darkness. It will take the demonstration of God's power to set them we will take the demonstration of the power of God. How many people today, the reason why they they open their heart to Jesus is because God visited them in their dreams. And others, they, they had a supernatural encounter with Jesus. With you somehow you, you had an encounter with Jesus in your life, or perhaps because there's this demonstration of the power of the Spirit, you, you got healed, you experienced miracle. The miracle, and that's why here Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 10. He says here, as you go. Proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come here. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. 
So if we want to see people set free, we need the Holy Spirit to fill us with power. I remember Smith Wigglesworth. I went reading um, a book that talks about some of the mighty men that live in our in our generation or previous generation. Now, there, this is there is this man by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. He is known for demonstrating the power of God. You see, right? You know. Under his belt, okay, there were 11 recorded people who were raised to life because of this man through his ministry. And countless of miracles happened during his meetings. God really used him. He, has a, he is a man of faith. Smith Wigglesworth said, said this, you can never be ordinary from the day you receive the life from above. You become extraordinary from the day you receive this life from above. You become extraordinary, filled with the extraordinary power of our extraordinary God. Let me say that again. You become extraordinary, filled with the extraordinary power of our extra ordinary God. The Holy Spirit will make a tremendous difference on the way you live your life, but not only that, as you proclaim the gospel, as you endeavor to do the purpose of God in advancing His kingdom, I tell you, you will see the works or the evidence Evidences of the power of God. He will do that. So we need to demonstrate the power of God's kingdom for people to experience the reality of God. Now, some of you have known Anthony Roquel. You know, he visited us here, uh, when was that? Two years ago. Are we? We're, yeah, here. And he. Some of you, you already know his story. He used to be a gay, but he was transformed by God. And now God is using him to reach, you know, to reach others, to reach the lost, particularly those people who, who were like him before he became a Christian. Bonnie Reyes earlier, the mother of Vigo Soto, the mayor of Basi, was now, you know, you've heard a lot about Vigo Soto, one of the, the best politicians we have now, very young and yet, God has given him wisdom how to refer. You see, this, this guy, this uh, um, Reyes' son, grew up in the his church. That's the reason why, I, how many of you know, it's really important that as young as they are, these kids are, they need to hear the word. But Connie Reyes, he was touched by the power of God. Left her former lead-in partner and now being used by God to reach the show his personalities. Now, it's not, it wasn't easy for her when she went when she first got saved. But because of the power of God, that brought change into her life and that trajectory of her life. And today we're going to watch also some testimonies of some of our members who were changed and impacted by the power of God. I want us to watch this video and I will conclude. Basically, when I think about my life before Christ, I felt empty. It's just a big dark hole. I felt empty. I saw God as more of a scary God who punishes you if you do something wrong. Because my identity and purpose was rooted in just working hard to prove myself. I was wrong. I was atheist. I was uh, part of this world, believing in myself. I slowly did go into the world. 
um, I think about five years ago, and, um, after uh, I started one-to-one, -one, then I started reading the Bible more, because it took kind of time before I started really believing, and um, because I really wanted to believe 100% or nothing. A high school friend of mine introduced me to a campus missionary, so